Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm going to be reviewing several new tracks as part of this new track review segment, where I'm just going to get to share my general thoughts and opinions on several new releases. Uh, we're going to be starting off today's uh, video with this new single from Big Boy titled Doing It, which includes two new tracks from him. Now Big Boy is an artist that I do quite enjoy, especially when it comes to his work with Outkast. Uh, however, this couple of new tracks that he's just dropped recently aren't really two that I would consider myself all that much of a fan of. The track Doing It that's a part of this single is a pretty poppy hip-hop track, not in the sense that it's going for a trap sort of sound, more poppy in the sense that it just has a very upbeat and cheerful and happy feel to it. It's the type of song that I feel like you could play in the car with your soccer mom of choice and they'd approve of it still. Uh, it's just that sugary sweet. And overall, I really don't feel like this sound complements Big Boy all that nicely. It just isn't all that interesting a track to me, really. I mean, the track itself, I guess, is fine enough when it comes to the performances on it, uh, but nothing about it really stands out to me as being super exciting, really. It just feels like a really safe uh, pop rap song, which I guess if you're into that and you like Big Boy doing that style, then you'll be into this track. But if you're like me and you really don't care for him doing that sound, uh, this song really won't give you much to enjoy because like I said the performances on it are okay but the song itself there's just not a whole lot interesting to it. Going into the second track from this single Return of the Dope Boy I was hoping that it was going to be something a bit more in Big Boy's lane when it comes to the sound of the overall track and it is however this track still manages to somehow be significantly worse than that first track I was just talking about. Uh, the biggest problem I have with Return of the Dope Boy is easily the beat on this track. It just sounds terrible, to be completely honest. It kind of sounds like this really awful, shrill version of like the Halloween theme, like from the movie. Like it sounds like that, but terrible. And it doesn't sound like noisy and just disgusting sounding in like a good way, like an industrial sort of way or anything like that. It sounds like it in this really cheap and painful to listen to kind of way. And outside of the very annoying and shrill synths that go on throughout the course of this track, there's really not all too much else to the beat of this song to really distract you from how terrible that aspect of the beat sounds. It's just constantly being forced in your face. When it comes to the actual rapping on this track itself, it's pretty okay overall. Like the first track that makes up this single, the performances here are, are okay, but like they're not great either, which is kind of disappointing considering all the MCs that appear on this track are pretty talented, and I just kind of feel like they're really phoning it in here on this song. Overall, uh, just based on the rapping alone, this track would have been okay, I guess, but the beat really makes it a pain to listen to, which is kind of a shame considering uh, this, this track, and, and even the first track on this single, could have been so much better. Alright, moving on, we're going to be talking about this new single from Mariana's Trench, Only the Lonely Survive. Mariana's Trench are one of my favorite pop rock bands out there. With all the albums that they've released so far, they've been able to demonstrate that they've, they're you know, fully capable of mixing the poppy, catchy sound of pop rock with uh, greater, more interesting themes and storytelling throughout their music, which is always something that I really loved about them. It makes them stand out from a lot of the other pop rock bands out there that are just really one-dimensional and not all that interesting. Mariana's Trench typically are anything but that. However, the last single that they released towards the end of last year for their upcoming album was a track that I really didn't care for all too much. It felt really uh, one-dimensional and uninteresting overall. Pretty much the exact opposite of what I expect to hear in a Mariana's Trench song. However, uh, this new track here from them is one that I can fortunately say is significantly better. It's a bit of a slower song, however, it also has a nice build up going on here in this track. I love the chorus on this thing as well. It's really catchy, it's really grand, it's very Mariana's Trench in nature, if you're familiar with this group, and how theatrical and large uh, some of the concepts on their previous albums were. This type of track feels like it fits in a lot more nicely with the sound that this band has already established for themselves on previous albums like Astoria and Ever After. However, at the same time, it sounds like it is from a different projects than those albums. Now don't get me wrong, this track isn't perfect by any means. I do feel like if you were to put it up against a lot of the tracks from Astoria, for example, it would be one of the weaker cuts overall. While this is a good track, I'm not sure I would go as far as to say it's a great one overall. A lot of the ideas that the band pulls off here on this thing are stuff that they've done in the past, but better 
overall. Though they do still do it decently here on this track as well. Overall, it's just a pretty solid uh, pop rock song overall. And if you're a fan of this band, I think you're definitely going to like this track. And this definitely has me a bit more excited to see what they're going to deliver with this upcoming studio album of theirs. Uh, at least I'm more excited than I was after hearing that first single they dropped at the end of last year. So yeah, uh, overall, if you're a fan of pop rock or Mariana's Trench, uh, check this out. Moving on, we're going to be talking about this new collaborative track between Lil Peep, I Love McConan, and Fall Out Boy, I Have Been Waiting. Now, I mostly checked out this track for Fall Out Boy and their contribution to it, considering I am a Fall Out Boy fan. I'm not really as familiar or as much of a fan of Lil Peep and I Love McConan's material, uh, but I decided to check this track out because, you know, why not really? And coming into this track, I was expecting two things, really. One thing to be that this song was just going to be a bit messy and all over the place. And the second thing was that it was just going to be a cash grab, kind of coming off of the uh, hype and popularity of Lil Peep following his unfortunate death back in 2017. Um, as far as the first of those two things goes, I would say that this track is a lot more coherent and well put together than I would have expected, to be honest. I mean, it's not a perfectly put together track by any means. I do feel like there are certain parts of it that are put together somewhat, you know, sloppily, but it definitely comes together a lot better than I initially expected. Uh, Little Peep's part on the track here is one that I really don't care for all that much. I mean, I've never really been a fan of the guy's singing voice all that much, and on this track, it really doesn't sound all that much better. He's doing that uh, nasally, raspy singing that he typically does. And I'm just not really all that much of a fan of it. I really can't blame him, though, for his performance here on this track, given that, of course, he wasn't alive to put this track together. So obviously, I really can't blame him for anything that goes on here on this track. But yeah, I was really was not all too much a fan of his performance here on this thing. Also, he doesn't really have all that big a part here on this track, which is kind of surprising because uh, I expected him to have a bigger role overall on this track. I do kind of feel like... Uh, they're just trying to squeeze whatever money they can out of what remains of Little Peep's musical uh, remains and demos and whatever he still has left over uh, from stuff he was working on before he unfortunately passed away. Isla McConan probably has the best part of the track overall. He sounds the most natural and comfortable in this song overall. I think his verses on this thing are pretty solid. Uh, just a pretty decent performance overall, I would say. Not a performance that blew me away or anything, but a decent one overall. Definitely the standout on the track, if you will. And Fall Out Boy's part on this track is one that is probably the most out there and strange to some degree. Uh, I really don't feel like Patrick Stump's vocals uh, pair up very nicely with either Lil Peeps or I Blood McConans, and the two of them already have pretty distinct vocals. Uh, on their own and adding Patrick Stump's kind of unique almost soulful vocals into this thing just adds another type of vocal in there that just helps make the track feel a bit more all over the place and a bit messier than I feel it needs to be. Fall Out Boy on this track just kind of feels like an afterthought really. I'm not sure exactly to what extent the other members of the band outside of Patrick were involved in the instrumentation here on this track. The beat here to this song is a pretty poppy sounding electronic kind of hip-hop beat. It doesn't really sound all that different from something that I could have seen appearing on the band's last album, Mania. Uh, however, it works a lot better in the context of this track than it does in the context of that album, considering, at least when it comes to I Love McCone and Little Peep, uh, I just feel like this beat works pretty nicely when paired up with the both of them overall. However, when paired up with Fall Out Boy and their part of the track, it doesn't really work all that nicely. It kind of reminds me of Mania at times, which is definitely not a good thing. So yeah, overall, this track is kind of a mixed bag, and it's not really one that I care for all too much. Like I said, the best part of the track is probably I Love McConan's performance on this thing, and the beat, at least when it's not paired up with Patrick and his vocals on this thing, is pretty okay as well. However, like I said, I'm not a particularly big fan of Lil Peep's performance here on this thing, and Fall Out Boy's part on the track just feels like it was added in later to have more features on this thing and to have more attention thrown at this track. And that's just another thing about this track that I really don't care for all that much. And I just kind of feel like they're trying to, once again, as I said before, squeeze every last cent that they can out of what remains of Little Peep and his music, which is just kind of something that um, I, I'm not really all that much a fan of. Even though I'm not a fan of the guy's music by any means, uh, it just feels a bit gross for bands like Fall Out Boy, for example, to be jumping on a track like this and trying to make money off of it pretty much. It doesn't sit with me all too 
nicely. But yeah, the, tr the track on its own, completely separated from all of that in my thoughts regarding that, is one that is just kind of uh, there. It's not a track I care for all that much, uh, but it definitely could have been worse. Next up, we're going to be talking about this new Children of Bodom track, This Road. This track is going to be appearing on the band's upcoming album that uh, I believe is dropping in March. And overall, I think that this is a decent track overall. I honestly don't have all too much to say about this track. Uh, it's, it's a Children of Bodom song, pretty much. If you're familiar with the band and their style of music, I think you'll have a pretty solid idea of what you're going to be getting here on this track. The instrumentation overall on this track is pretty solid. I especially like the solo that comes in on this track later on in the song's runtime. I think it's a pretty solid one, easily the highlight of the track overall. And I think the hook on this track is also a pretty catchy one as well. Uh, it's overall just a pretty decent song overall. It's not one that blew me away or anything like that. Uh, I'm hoping that this upcoming album from them maybe has a lot more stronger cuts on it than this one. But this is a, a decent track overall. I would recommend this to fans of the band or fans of this genre of music in general. Next up, we're going to be talking about this collaborative track between Snake Ships, Rivers Cuomo, and Kyle titled Gucci Rock and Rolla. Now, I checked out this track primarily for Rivers Cuomo and his involvement, considering I'm a pretty big Weezer fan, the band that Rivers is the frontman of. Uh, but I wasn't really sure what to expect from this thing, considering I wasn't really familiar with Snake Ships prior to hearing this track. Uh, overall, though, uh, this track is definitely an interesting one uh, for many reasons really. I'll start off by saying I like Snake Ship's production here on this track overall. I think it's pretty fun and upbeat and happy sounding. Uh, it just pulls off a really fun, enjoyable sound in a way that uh, complements uh, Kyle's performance on this track rather nicely. And when it comes to his performance on this thing, it's one that I quite enjoy. He also has a really happy and upbeat feel to him when he's rapping here on this track. He sounds very playful, and he sounds like he's having a great time rapping on this thing. And overall, it just complements the beat in a way that I really like overall. I think Snake Ships and Kyle have great chemistry here on this track, and uh, I would say that Kyle's part is easily my favorite part of this thing over overall. Uh, so while I'm pretty positive on those aspects of the track, I'm not that big a fan of Rivers' uh, part of the song. He comes in on this track with this very silly, almost meme-like uh, quality of lyrics here on the hook, and I'm certain that the lyrics here and the overall vibe is supposed to be playful and silly given that the whole rest of the track, from Kyle's part to uh, the beat, is similarly fun and playful. However, I think River's part overall just doesn't really sell it as nicely as the rest of the track does. I kind of feel like I'm not sure if he's supposed to be serious or if he's trying to be ironic with a lot of the lyrics here. Uh, he just doesn't really do a good job of selling what he's trying to get across here overall. And uh, it just feels awkward uh, listening to this track, or his part of the track in particular, really. It kind of feels like he's going through a midlife crisis here with how ridiculous some of these lyrics are, but it kind of sounds like he's not even all that much aware of it. It kind of feels like it's also trying to appeal to the Weezer uh, fan base, at least the portion of it that is really into the memes, especially following the band's successful Africa cover and their covers album they recently dropped. Uh, I feel like this is trying to appeal to that portion of the fan base. Maybe it feels stylistically a bit similar. But, yeah, didn't really care for that part of the track all too much, and it did kind of ruin a lot of my enjoyment of this track, considering his part takes up a significant portion of this track's overall runtime, or at least it feels that way. So yeah, uh, the beat was okay on this track, Kyle's performance is pretty solid overall, but Rivers just really did nothing for me on this track, which is kind of disappointing considering I went into this track only expecting, uh, uh, having any type of expectations for him, but kind of being disappointed by him and being uh, pleasantly surprised by the other artists on the track. So yeah, only recommend this to you if uh, you're in the mood for something happy and silly sounding. Maybe this will be something up your alley. Or if you're a fan of any of the artists featured on this thing, uh, I would definitely check it out at least. And finally, we're going to close out this video today by talking about this new periphery track, Blood Eagle, which I believe is going to be coming on an upcoming album from these guys. It's going to be coming out later this year as well. I really got into these guys with the release of their last album back in 2016. Uh, overall, I like how this group is able to blend that genty style of progressive metal with a lot of other different aspects as well. It's not just a straightforward 
uh, gent fest, if you will. There's a lot more going on in their music that I really enjoy. And this track here is a prime example of why I ended up liking that last album from the group as much as I did. While the band does have that typical gent sound going on throughout the course of this track, they managed to mix things up quite a lot here on this song. There's portions of this track that are very aggressive and straightforward with those very uh, boisterous riffs. Uh, and there's also parts of this track that are a lot more melodic and toned back a bit as well. Uh, and one thing that really impressed me about this track is just how nicely it's all blended together here on this song. The transitions between the more aggressive moments and softer moments and then back to the more aggressive moments are done in a way that's really interesting and just seamlessly done. It's not distracting, it doesn't feel like I'm transitioning between several little snippets of music. It feels like one cohesive piece, but there's so much packed into this one piece of music. And the song overall isn't even all that long to be honest. It runs around six minutes in length, but I feel like there's so much more going on in this track than what you typically get out of like a six minute song or so. So yeah, overall I think that this is a pretty fantastic first single from this upcoming album of theirs that, like I said, I'm pretty excited to hear later this year if this is what's going to be on it. I feel like this track showcases the best of this band, all the performances on this thing are really solid, the vocals are great as well, uh, the way that they're able to incorporate so much into so little, I guess you could say, of runtime is really impressive as well. Overall, it's just a really exciting and interesting track. Every time I came back to listen to it, there was more and more for me to take in. And I have a feeling that as I continue to listen to the track even more and hear it in the context of the album it's a part of, there will be even more for me to take out of it going forward in the future. So yeah, if you're a fan of Periphery or just metal in general, I would recommend this track to you for sure. And with that said, that concludes this track review segment. I did get to talk about several new tracks here today, but I also want to know what your thoughts on these tracks are. Feel free to leave your own opinion on any of these songs in the comments section down below. And please do remember that everything that I've said in the video is just my own personal opinion. If you happen to disagree with my opinions on any of these tracks, that is perfectly okay. In fact, that's why I want you guys to share those opinions in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more music-related content, more track reviews, album reviews, things of that sort. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you want to see that stuff. Thanks for watching once again, and stay golden.